first talk in the, the morning track. Uh, the next talk will be about uh, NF tables. And Pablo, will, uh, he's uh, head of the NetFilter core team, I think. And, and he will present it. Okay, so can you hear me? Yes. Well, so um, thank you everyone for attending this presentation. So my name is Pablo, and I'm going to talk about um, NF tables. The, the name of this presentation is uh, Goodbye NF Tables, well, Welcome NF Tables. So, so let's go back to um, why we, um, we got a new uh, framework for pack classification in the filter project and and the need for um, this um, incremental update in, in, in the development process. So basically, um, the situation that we have in the, in the NetFilter code base is that um, the back in the 90s, when uh, Rusty wrote IP tables, what happened is that he specifically designed that piece of code for um, IPv4. So what is happening is that people came later on and instead of trying to generalize that infrastructure, they just copy and paste that code. So from IP4, IPv4 tables, we got IPv6 tables. And then later on someone, uh, someone else follow up and we got ARP tables. And then someone follow and we got EV tables for which um, setups. So, um, this, from any development point of view, forces us to um, uh, copy. I mean, if we have to fix something in IP tables, we usually have to fix the same thing in the other code bases. We managed to consolidate part of the common infrastructure, which is what we call the X table thing. But um, it, it is not sufficient. I mean, we are exposing our binary <coughs> interface in a way that we cannot really consolidate that infrastructure. So, um, moreover, on top of that uh, problems, we these tools they evolve in, in different ways. For example, every table was maintained by a different person and introduced changes in the syntax. And for example, ARP tables remain quite behind in the development process. So in the end, what we had is that we have three, four, four utilities, IP tables, IPv6 tables, and ARP and AP tables that came from the same um, root, let's say, and then evolved in a different way. So if you use these utilities, you will find different, you will find inconsistencies in the syntax that is kind of not, not nice to have. So another problem is that, that we have is that um, we lack of, of a well-defined um, library API. So basically, um, uh, there back in the 90s, um, it was not so important to have a library for third-party applications. People were kind of fine with shell scripts and or simply just uh, piping commands to IP table restores. These days, it's not longer true. So we need a real, a real library that people can use to um, develop third-party applications. So um, we, in this, in, the new, in this new iteration, we introduce a proper library to do that, with it, which is libnftnl. That is a low-level library, and we will have also a high-level library soon. That is libnftables that should uh, allows you to um, interact with nftables natively without needing shell script and that kind of blue code that is not very nice to have. So, what else? Um, uh, we also uh, uh, needed more uh, faster and better classification um, <coughs> infrastructure. So, in NF tables we got concatenations and 
maps that basically uh, allows us to arrange the rules in a way that we can perform very, very um, fast lookups. I'll show you some several examples. This, this is kind of not easy to integrate into EP tables, into EP tables without main changes in the core. And it was not, as I said, many, many of the low level details of IP tables are exposed to user space in a binary interface. So we, we didn't have to, we didn't have the chance to make this in an incremental way. Also, because of the way IP table design is designed, it, it's, it's not easy to, to support this kind of thing in a generic way. So, um, and another thing is that we are kind of, uh, living in a situation where we have IPv4 um, deployment and we will soon move to IPv6. Well, people have been telling that we will be moving soon for a long time, but I mean this will happen at some point. And we got uh, we got that um, users are basically having developing their own scripts to um, maintain both IPv4 and IPv6 rule sets which basically makes the maintenance burden, just to, to reduce the maintenance burden. Um, this kind of glue code um, has been doing the trick for them, but we were, we were trying to find a nice solution to this problem from the, from the core infrastructure. Another thing that we wanted to revisit is um, syntax. I mean, anyone here that has used IP tables, um, has probably needed, I mean, needs to type dash dash, whatever, dash dash, whatever, and spend most of the time just typing that, right? So we were aiming to a more compact uh, syntax, and, and we, have, we have kind of interesting, interesting stuff like auto generated, I show you, but auto generated dependencies. So based on what the user provides, the tool is kind of smart in the way that it, it's going to pull dependencies so you're going to match exactly what you're asking for without explicitly telling when typing this. So let's let's have a look at the at the, at the internals. So basically um, and from from the kernel space what we have is we have the kind of tables virtual machine is it's kind of a simple virtual machine. It, it got 22 instructions in from the kernel space, we call that expressions. And we can address um, memory using a, a scratch pad area, the registers, at 32 and uh, 128 bit um, level. We have very, very simple bytecode verification. So basically our instructions never pass pointers between them. So you use a space kind of really kind of inject nasty stuff to us. It's just they they just inject values or so worst case it's a, it's just going to get the, the virtual machine doing the stupid things and it's not going to crash our kernels. And we no we don't uh, we don't have we don't have uh, backward jumps either, so we don't have to uh, worry about the user supplying some kind of a bytecode that is going to loop forever and also hang your system, right? So it's kind of simple, specific, network specific virtual machine. And the instructions that we have, I show you, it basically just fetch an, an arbitrary amount of data and place it to the register and then perform a comparison. And so it's, it's very, very simple. And another, another thing that we got is a Netlink, Netlink socket interface. By the time IP tables was designed, um, and Netlink was not kind of consolidated these days, it, it is the standard interface in working, networking subsystems. Um, for those that don't know, Netlink basically is a socket family that is um, specialized in providing um, communication between kernel and user space. Actually, you can also use it to communicate to user space processes. But it's, it's mostly used to, to communicate um, kernel and user space subsystems. It got, it got very, very nice features like uh, asynchronous notifications and, and split acknowledgments and, and a very, very um, efficient way to dump tables. I mean, lots of very nice features that um, that all the working system usually usually have. 
So, uh, as I said, we got a, a user space library that is libNFTNL. This is this is uh, this NFTNL is stands for uh, NFTables Netlink. We are planning for a Eigen library, Eigen Eigen level library that is uh, libNFTables, and basically the two. These two levels, low level and high level, provides different views of the of the control plane. Basically, if you want to operate at very low level and you want to, I mean, from net level, you you, you can use um, uh, live NFT you know. But if you want to use the features that we have that we currently have in NFT, for example, um, the um, the grammar and kind of compiler that we have in NFT that we will basically um, extract and place in, a, in the high level library um, so you can you can you, you will be able to invoke commands and and operate in, in, in a way that will allow you to abstract to avoid touching that link so just just use it use net filter and F tables in a more in a more uh, simple way so depending on what you need you can you can select what you you prefer so, but anyway, the, so far we got the NFT NL and NFT the command line tool that is basically behaves kind of uh, as a compiler. It provides a interactive shell, a, and, and you can get also scripting <coughs> capabilities. So, let's have a look at how NFT works from the more interesting side. That is basically the um, the bytecode generation. So um, there you have a rule, the, the, um, the option that allows you, that shows this bytecode generation is uh, dash dash debug equal netlink. So this is, we are just adding a rule, and this rule is being added to uh, a table, the name of the table is foo, and chain is bar. As you notice, with regards to IP tables, we don't have um, predefined tables and chains anymore. So we, we just create custom tables and we populate them with whatever kind of chain configuration that we need. And then we fill that those chains with rules. So we are keeping the same objects that we had in IP tables, but um, we are increasing the degree of configurability that we didn't have before. So um, Basically, um, the first expression that we have is city state new. This is matching for, um, based on the contract states, is matching for packets that, um, packets that are part of a flow that is in, in state new. We have four states in our connection tracking system. It's new, that means this is the first packet that we, has, we are seeing in a flow. We have established, that means we have seen traffic in both, both directions. Invalid, that means that this packet has triggered a invalid transition. And we have related, that means this packet is coming as a reply for, a, a, for another packet. And as, if it is part of a conversation. But is is let's say for example if you, I I trade I send UDP traffic UDP has no means to uh, reject so we got a reply from layer three um, uh, ICMP error right so that 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 will be related traffic right so basically here we were just um, matching for the first packet that is part of a flow and. The way this is generated is that we load the uh, contract state into a register, and then we just um, compare if this is exactly matching the new flag that is that number eight. Then um, what we got is um, a, this range is generating this this byte code. It's basically we are extract, extracting four bytes. Of from the packet payload and at the network header offset and, and then the offset from that network header is 12 so we are basically getting the, the source IP address and we are placing that into into the register and then we are comparing if this is 
this is uh, inside the range. Then next, um, when matching TCP destination port, know that um, NFT is generating a dependency. The dependency is basically checking for um, protocol um, layer for protocol in the IP header that is underlined in yellow there, and then um, matching for um, the uh, destination port. And finally, we are accepting the traffic if the evaluation of this get to this point. So we've got a, a network specific compiler to um, to build our rules, right? So how do we do how do we do it from the from from the dump path when trying to get the rule set we got a decompiler actually. So when dumping path the rule set we are um, building the a abstract syntax tree and that abstract syntax tree it's basically uh, we have a, a, a stage of this post process just to um, based on what we got to fill context information so we can infer things that we didn't get from from the bytecode itself and at some point we get the we textify so we get the NFT syntax. So going back to to the to the main um, object that we have in in NFT. So as in as in AP tables, we got tables, we got rules, we got chains. But this time, <coughs> tables are empty containers initially. So you can create any table. That table has to be bound to a specific formula. In this case, we are creating a um, table full for the family IP. We've got families. We've got IP at the sixth. Inet that is a special family that sees traffic both for IPv4 and IPv6. We've got bridge, we've got ARP, and we, we've got a new one that is NetDev that is basically the, that provides the ingress hook that I show you later. So we create this empty container and then we can populate that container, that table, with chains. We have two types of chains. We have base chains and all base chains. Base chains are those chains that see traffic. So base chains in their configuration always indicate the type of chains that you get, that you have. So basically in this case it's a filter chain. This is where we retain the semantics that we used to have in IP tables. If you are familiar with IP tables, um, we've got filter tables, right? And the semantics is that just filter, do, just we see traffic, we drop packets or we accept them. Or we got NAT table, so that table, if you remember, um, basically only the first packet is matched against the rule set. We got um, the raw table that is kind of a filter table but before the connection tracking. We've got mangle that is a table that triggers routings in case of several, in case of specific fields of the packet or metadata is updated. Right? So those semantics that we have in the tables that were attached to the tables itself, now we have propagated into chains. Okay? So you can basically, if you want to have one single global table and place all your chains there, that's fine. And why do we do we do we introduce this degree of configurability in, in the chain configuration? Because we've got users reporting that um, empty chains were harming performance. So people wanted to have a wanted to have a way to not to specifically uh, not to have chains reused by default. So that's why we came with this solution. So. Um, And once we get tables and chains, we can populate them with rules. So, um, one of the one of the interesting things about IP table uh, about NF tables is that we the design the design of the table was made in a way that it looks like kind of Lego fashion. Like I show you those small bricks, right? So, um, the the kernel space has this virtual machine with instructions, and basically. Um, it's so generic that we can um, we can build 
any matching using generic, generic operations that, that are not specific of selectors. In AP tables, every, every extension got built in all the, uh, all the, all the uh, capabilities, that, all, the, all the operations that you can perform on, on it. I mean, if I want to compare one other range, if, you, if, we, if I want to have a, a um, bitwise, I want to perform a bitwise operations in, in AP tables that was built in, in, into the extension. In, in NS tables, this is generic. So um, we've got comparisons, and that applies to any kind of selector. Um, we've got ranges, prefixes, flags, that is usually this comma separated list of values, bitwise and comparisons, and if I want to set a value, probably those that are familiar with uh, comma mark, we, we will not need a comma mark extension in, in NF tables because we can just basically set the, um, the contract mark based on the meter mark. Okay, so restoring these values is, is, is kind of very easy to express. So, um, more, more changes with regards to IP tables is that um, counters are not, are not uh, mandatory anymore. So every time you add a rule in IP tables, you get counters, even if you don't need it. Now you have to indicate specifically counter in the rules so if you get that on. And would anyone tell me how to interpret that rule with two counters? So the evaluation of the rule is happening from from left to right, okay? So basically, um, this rule that has been placed in the table full and chain bar, um, we, we have the first thing that it finds is a, a counter instruction, right? That counter instruction is bumping the counters unconditionally, good? Okay? And then we check if this is the, the source, the, the, this is the, the packet containing this source address, good? Okay? So if it's matching, it's going to again bump another counters, good? If it's not matching, it will, yeah, it will stop evaluating, good? So basically the first counter instance will always increase, no matter if it matches or not, and the second one will always update, will, will it, get, will it will get updated if, if uh, we have a matching, good? Another thing that we wanted to have is several actions in one single rule. This was not possible in IP tables, um, so we were asking users to create custom chains, or now what we call in NF tables uh, non-based chains. And this is no longer needed anymore. We can just um, express this lock and drop thing that many people need in one single go. So. Um, Oh, I forgot something, anything. Yes, we got the interactive mode that I show you in the workshop. Basically, it gets us to a native shell. So far, there is no auto-completion there, but we will have it at some point. We, 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 that will be kind of good to have. And, but at least we got history, so, so we got the basic features there. And... Um, one of the most, the more, the most uh, interesting features of NF tables is this Unix set infrastructure that we get. Um, so it's, it's not, we, we don't need updates in the kernel side to support new selectors. We, we just need, based on the bricks that we have, we, we only need to update the user space side to, to build more complicated to express more complicated things, good? So, this generic set infrastructure allows us just to match a list of elements, in this case, destination ports. This is a implicit set definition. Every time you use the brackets, you're in the kernel, 
you are creating a set. Good. So, uh, port matching, TCP destination, 2380 and, and 40, uh, 40, 43 will be matching. Good. So, you don't need three rules to express this as, as it happened in IP tables or use that. Probably, you know, the multi port match that was kind of a hack to resolve this situation. Multi port match allows us to have five ports. No more than that, yes. so we don't need that anymore. And you can, you can, of course, you can include a any kind of arbitrary amount of elements, and also you can, you can include ranges there. Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah. Is the the optional counter? Is that optional? Is that for performance reasons? Yeah, exactly. It's for for one reasons. I mean, there are people that don't want don't want counters in rules, so. Yes, I mean any any extra uh, any extra code that you execute that you don't need it it just it is just consuming performance for no reason, right? Yes, yes. It, it, all this all this extra flexibility is is all about that. I mean, every time we made an assumption, a strong assumption in IP tables, um, we always got a user later on telling us, uh, "Listen, we don't know, we don't we don't want counters." So how can we remove this? So, and then, and then looking at the code base, we then have an easy way to get rid of them without breaking firewall compatibility. That is another main concern that we we try to keep in mind always, right? So, um, so going back to the topic, um, you can also define uh, the clear um, name sets. Um, these name sets they have a so, so the user can identify this, this set with a specific name, and it can dynamically update the content of it. So, in this case, there we got a what list set, and you have to specify the data type of the elements that are going to be contained there. Okay. <laughs> so you don't have to keep in mind, you don't have to memorize all these data type because you can. You can inquire NFT to know the data type of. Okay, so I want to use this selector. What is the data type of this? And NFT will tell you. I'll show you. The data set describe command that show you this. So um, once we have created the set, we can populate it. We can add, delete elements anytime. Um, one single element or as or as many elements as you need. And then um, another the very very nice feature is. Are the, the maps? So this is the set declaration. This is a reference I forgot to mention. This is the the add. It's basically from the rule we are referring to a existing set that we have declared already. And then regarding maps, what we are telling here is to perform source map based on the IP source. So it's a conditional. Conditional uh, source net, source net. This in AP tables, the only way to express it was um, just inserting several rules, and that means that we have a linear inspection that is exactly what is harming performance, right? So all these tricks is are are there are there just to avoid this this linear evaluation. So here, what we are doing is is we are going to source net depending on the IP source address that we got from the packet. So if if the source packet, yeah, the, the IP source address of the packet is in this range, then we use this source uh, address for the nothing. Otherwise, we use this one. We can also use a wildcard. So we can specify a default um, value to be applied to no matching um, elements. Okay, no matching packets. So what else we we got timeouts. So the timeouts is a nice feature. So you can you can build white lists or black lists. So basically you can specify a amount of time that the element is going to be there, and after that that amount of time it expires and it's gone. So <laughs> it's very flexible because the timeouts um, you can explain you can uh, express express them globally. But if you specify the timeout flag. You can indicate specific timeouts per elements, so it's not that 
Um, so we, we, get, we get the flexibility of fine grain and, and sparse grain timeout configuration. Yeah, and whitelist can become a blacklist. So um, we also have uh, dictionaries or what we call vertic maps. The vertic maps um, are basically a way to find um, a um, chain to jump to in case of a specific matching. In this case, based on the layer layer four protocol, we jump into the specific chain that contains the rules that apply to that protocol. Good, and this this um, from the kernel we are using the set generic set infrastructure. So finding the matching is very very fast. Instead of having naked tables, where we need again several rules to to express these. Um, all these things that we are that we are talking about is that I'm talking about. They, they can we can combine them all, right? So we got concatenations, and we can also use concatenations from sets and maps. And these concatenations basically are you can build a tuple of several selectors. It's dot separated, and and. We can combine this with a vertex map. So we can, based on, on, on the matching, in this case, is if the matching is at this IP, this IP source address and TCP, port, TCP, TCP destination port, we are going to jump to, to a specific chain. Good. We can also use this, of course, from name set declarations. We also have built-in support for, for comments, that is better than in IP tables. In IP tables, we have to use a extension that was actually having performance um, because it, it is, the, the, the comment was, was stored in a area that is basically uh, accessed from the packet path that doesn't make, make much, much sense. But in this case, in, in, in NF tables, we introduce comments and they are, they are placed um, out of the packet path, and you can use them from elements, but also from rules. Okay. We have built-in support for rate limiting, both at packet and bandwidth, one with bandwidth level. And we got scraping capabilities. That is another feature that users have requested for quite some time. I mean, it was kind of easy to find users detailing their IP tables configuration using shell scripts. But we were telling users that shell scripts were very bad, and for one specific reason, because shell scripts did not provide any kind of atomicity when applying the rule set, and it was always way, way slower than using the IP tables, IP tables restores, restore utility. So um, instead of keep blaming users, we try to find a solution built in that is uh, supporting this um, scripting capabilities. The, the bare minimum that we have at this moment are variables, and because users like to have some kind of um, name that tells them uh, what this set is about, right? And also the capability of the the, um, the capability of splitting the rule set in in several files, right? That you can include with with um, uh, that you can include from from one master file. So basically, when preloading the rule set, and if they was going to pull these rule sets into um, the, the, the main rule set and push that into the kernel. Okay. Two, five minutes. Good, I'm fine. So, um, to restore the rule set, um, uh, that NFT has, it should not be there. So, um, if you want the same semantics as in AP tables, the first command that you have to include in your uh, rule set file is flush rule set. 
this is this is not as you as you can you can see there. This is this is not um, uh, kind of uh, specific. It's not inactive will restore every time that you invoke it. You are you are getting rid of the right if if you if you have flushed in the previous rule set, you're getting rid of the former rule set, right? In, a, in an FT, this you need this specific command to, 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 to wipe all the 16 rule set. And, and then the listing, we store it in a file. Uh, there, is a, there is a couple of typos there, right? So it should be, no? And then you store the rule set with minus F. This is something that we don't have in every day, but this is support for monitoring. So you can monitor rule set updates with NFT monitor, and you can filter out also the kind of events that you that you need. Since kernel 4.2, we got a new ingress hook, so you can use NFT from ingress to filter traffic instead of TC. How many of you use TC? Okay, how many of you like TC? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now you have an alternative. Good. So, and this this new ingress hook is basically placed before um, row per routing. It's it's on. You can consider it a layer two hook, right? And um, this is just a bit of information extra in case you want to have a look if you didn't try any tables yet. We have also a compatibility utility that will be capable of translating your all rule sets so we can make it easier for you to to move to migrate to NF tables. And so far what we are asking users is to stick to latest because um, NFT is an ongoing development effort. So it's good if you stick to the latest versions of the utilities, libraries and kernel versions. You help you help us testing, you check what you need. You report that through Bookzilla, and we'll keep that in mind and trying to, to integrate into the infrastructure. And we also created that um, Twitter thing that um, last time we asked. It's not that I'm not sure if this you are the Twitter crowd or not. I mean, I'm 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 still more uh, a mailing list person, but anyway, we keep this so people that like this can get reports on what is what is going on, right? So that's basically. It. Any questions? You said several times this is faster, that is faster. If I look at the overall, this is still faster. Um, I mean, probably if you compare um, IP tables exactly with the same rule set converted to, to NF tables, you will probably get a little bit less performance in NFT. But if you rearrange your rule set using the capabilities that NFT provides, <laughs> you are going to get way more performance. I mean, all this sets, maths, and so on. So, I, I got some report of users telling me that, you see, linear inspection is, um, NFT is not performing. That uh, We said, okay, but this is exactly what we're trying to avoid. So this is not a, we don't want benchmarks of uh, 50,000 rules anymore, right? So we want that you heavily use the map infrastructure, the dictionary infrastructure, the set infrastructure, you rearrange your rules in, in a smart way, and then you uh, run your benchmarks again and you tell us this is this is uh, this is outperforming and I have tables, right? So this is what and we are also planning to have um, kind of tools that will suggest you transformation on your rules. So this is something that we have already planned. So it's not that you will have to break your head trying to arrange things in a better way. So at some point we will have smart tools indicating you probably you want to rearrange this in this way. So one last uh, question. Yeah. If you if you why would you want NF tables to uh, to be agnostic of their logic? So. And what I mean is that if you if you have a, re, a, a rule set that is really badly poorly written, you would expect uh, NF table to fix fix the problems that it creates for you because otherwise, you, well, 
if you have the, the packet filter from BSD, for instance, it does this as well. It, it looks at the rule set and then makes decisions on what should be first and provides this penalty for, for bad, bad written rule sets. Yeah, I guess you're referring to, for example, rule shadowing or rearranging rules based on on uh, the, the most hit rule, probably place it first, or that kind of transformations to, to get better performance or to get rid of things that are not never are never visited, right? Exactly, yeah. So yes, I mean, with the, this new infrastructure, is I mean, the, the way we express things is so generic that we can we can introduce that kind of tools. That was not very easy to introduce in a generic way with IP tables, but now we can do it, and we, we have it in the roadmap, so You'll see, probably it will take a few years, but we will have it. We're still finishing and consolidating the core. Probably have all these smart tools, yes. Okay, if you want to hear more about uh, NF tables, then this afternoon Pablo will do a workshop of one and a half hours. So, uh, yeah, of course, you can join. Okay, thank you. Thank you.